Hey everybody, my name is Lance. The CL car is a really simple project that's great at illustrating three key physics concepts, surface area, friction, and aerodynamics. So I'll show you how to build it, and then I'll talk about how you can use those ideas to make your car go as fast or as far as possible. First, hot glue six craft sticks into a rectangle like this. Then cut a straw to size, and tape it onto the short edge of the frame in two places. Next, cut or break a dowel so that it's about two inches longer than the width of the frame. Put the dowel through the straw, and put the wheels on the ends. Wrap a small piece of tape around the ends of the dowel so the wheels don't fall off. And optionally, you can cut off the extra dowel with a pair of wire cutters so that it looks a little bit better. And repeat on the other side. Next, glue two craft cubes to the center of the frame, and glue two sticks onto the sides of those cubes. I'll talk about different sail design considerations in just a moment, but for now, just know that when you're attaching the sail to these upright pieces, make sure to use tape. This will make it easy to remove the sail and attach new designs that might work better. Okay, the basic design is done. So now I'm going to show you how to test and talk about some of the things that you should consider when you're designing your sail so that the car can go as fast or as far as possible. So one way to test is you could just blow on the sail, but I prefer to use a small fan. I also strongly recommend having a stopwatch so that you can precisely measure how well one sail design is working compared to another. So like I said at the top, there are three things that you need to think about to make the best sail design possible. First is surface area, and in this context, that means the amount of paper that's exposed to the oncoming airstream. The bigger the surface area is, the more likely it's going to catch those moving air molecules. Or in other words, those air molecules will collide with the paper and transfer their energy into the car, making it go even faster or farther. But counterbalance to that is friction. If you want more surface area, that means you need to build a bigger sail. All that material adds extra weight to the car, and that weight is going to impact how much friction is being generated here at the axle. And finally, there's the idea of how aerodynamic the car is. If you have a giant flat sail like this, that might catch a lot of the wind, but by the same token, it's going to collide with a lot of the air in front of it, and that can slow it down. Whereas a curved design like this might be able to catch wind effectively from the back, but because the front is shaped like this, the air molecules will move smoothly off to the sides instead of colliding directly with it and slowing it down. So I'm gonna test out some of these ideas right now so that you can see which sail designs perform best. Okay, so I'm just testing on my work table here. So the differences between the sail designs are going to be pretty small because this distance isn't very long. But if you were to test out your sails on a bigger floor or something, then the differences in sail designs are going to be exaggerated even more. Okay, so how long does it take for this design to go from the front of the fan to this roll of duct tape? Well, this design with the half sheet of curved paper worked pretty well. But what if we changed that shape, so instead of being curved, it's just flat? So the flat sail design worked a little bit better. And this is because it has a greater surface area that's exposed to that airstream, which means more of those air molecules are colliding with this and transferring their energy into the car and propelling it faster. Even though the curved sail might have been more aerodynamic, or in other words, it might have been able to push through the air more easily because there are fewer air molecules colliding with the front of it and slowing it down. In the end, having a sail with a bigger surface area was able to collect more of that energy. And that outweighed the downside of potentially going slower from having more drag. So if having more surface area makes the car go faster, then surely having a giant sail would work even better, right? So this one didn't work as well, and I think it's because it's so big that it's producing some diminishing returns. Yes, it does have a bigger sail, which means that it is catching more of those air molecules and getting more of that energy transferred into the car. But it's also starting to get kind of heavy. The weight of the paper and the frame are all resting on that little dowel. That dowel is rubbing against the plastic of the straw, and so the more weight that's pulling down, the more that rubbing is gonna generate friction and slow the car down. So you can see there's definitely a balance. If you have too little surface area, it won't be able to collect enough energy from those moving air molecules. And if the sail is too big, then it starts to get too heavy. 
So definitely experiment with the shape and size of your sail to see what design makes your car go the fastest or the farthest. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.